Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening, all your girlfriends and guy friends out there. This is Angela Jordan Perry with Girlfriends as Guide to Homeschooling. It's that time of the evening for an interview with one of our special guests. So you all tune in. Be sure to let us know where you are viewing us from. What city and state are you homeschooling in? We're in for a treat. We have a guy friend tonight on the show. Woohoo! A guy friend. So we're going to get him all set up and he is ready to rock and roll it. All righty. Woo! Here he is. All right, girlfriends, guy friends, special treat tonight. You all be ready. Here we are. No other than Jonathan Jagger we had this evening. So I'm going to share it. Hey, Jonathan, you ready to rock and roll in a bit? How are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> All right. I would let you know when I got it shared. It's going now and it's gone. So you can share it from Girlfriend's Guide to your personal page and any groups you like to share it on, okay? All right. Let me know when you've done it and we will get started. And we'll wait for some friends to get on here. So you all pop on in and join in in the fun this evening. It's going to be a treat. Gonna be a treat. There you go. <laughs> All righty. It's always a treat. We have a guy friend on Girlfriends' is Guide to Homeschooling. Always exciting. So let me know when you got it shared. I'm about to go in airplane mode. I have my share. All righty. Okay, let me hit my airplane and we'll be ready to go. Here we go. All right. Three, two, one. Girlfriends is Guide to Homeschooling. I have turned up for this evening's guest. Woo! Yes, a dear friend of mine. I'm so excited. Um, we actually have a guy friend. So you see this handsome man over here. He is the guest interviewee tonight. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am Angela Jordan Perry. I'm your host here at Girlfriends is Guide to Homeschooling. I'm a homeschooling mom of eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight children, three of which my husband and I have graduated and we're still homeschooling five, 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 five. So my husband, one, I'm the wife of one husband, 26 years, been homeschooling for 18 years. We make our homestead here in the upstate of Northwest North Carolina. I mean, South Carolina, I keep saying, I said the last time too. So South Carolina is where we are up here in the mountains. So uh, we raise uh, animals, we have a small farm, and um, we're busy in homeschooling. I'm busy, busy, busy in homeschooling. But this platform that I have provided for you on Girlfriends has Got to Homeschooling is a platform to give voice, voice to the homeschooling community of the African diaspora, okay? And also those who are marginalized homeschooling is really for everyone, but those are the people we need to hear their voices, to let you know that they are homeschooling well, strong, getting it done, having kids who are sociable. We're not hiding them up in an attic somewhere. <laughs> they are thriving and doing well in our homeschooling. So that's enough about me. Let me tell you about our guest. But first, Jonathan. What's up? Are you ready to make it happen? I, indeed, I am, queen. Yes, yes, I love what he, I told him I love when he calls me queen, just love it. But let me tell you a little bit about our guest. This is Jonathan Jagger, and Jonathan moved from Charleston to Spartanburg, South Carolina, in pursuit of greater opportunity for his family and himself. Jonathan is a father of five sons, five, Ugh, that's power, five sons, um, after Catherine, his wife, and himself studied the benefits of homeschooling, they made the decision to try it. Jonathan grew in passion for teaching his children so much that it inspired him to continue his own education. Jonathan is currently enrolled at Full Sail University studying media, marketing, and communications. Additionally, he is studying at Udacity for full stack developing. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, Jonathan looks forward to teaching computer language to his children and others. 
He aspires to work for a software development company in the near future. So, Jonathan, I have shared just a little bit about you with our girlfriends and guy friends this evening. Please tell us more about yourself and how you actually got started in homeschooling. Okay. Well, I definitely appreciate the elaborate introduction. <laughs> um, for myself, again, the father of five amazing uh, young men, the uh, husband to one wonderful woman. Her name is Catherine Jagger. Oh, if she's looking. All right. Um, my transition to go from the traditional way of educating our, um, our children um, actually develop over time. It wasn't something that I saw and I automatically had a craving for and jumped into because it's a little bit um, intimidating for someone that is not in the know-how of doing it. And I wasn't raised with a family who homeschool. I'm actually the first um, out of anyone in my family to homeschool. And I'm the baby of nine siblings, so uh, to tell you a lot there. They all have kids. Everybody has children. So um, I felt that it was best, especially in today's time, and having the information at our fingertips with the Internet to be able to research and educate our young men, especially for me, the black young men that's going to be growing up in today's society. So they are not just another number to an individual or to a uh, school, but someone that is able and is giving the tools in order to prosper. So um, seeing their future best inside of uh, the vision that me and my wife have for them, there was no other choice but to homeschool because they would not get that information anywhere else. Um, so... It started slowly, we began to progress, begin to do a little research, begin to link up with families and individuals who have done it or who's even thinking about doing it, sharing ideas. And we finally made a decision to go ahead and take that step into homeschooling. Now, I work full time, my wife worked full time. Um, we did not know exactly where the time were coming at, um, but we were not willing to give up on our children. And to give them the platform in order to create a whole new world, not just a new city, not just a new county, not just a new state or a new nation, but to have such an impact that it literally transformed the entire planet. And that's our vision. And there's no public system, um, especially when it comes down to educating, that will arm our children with the, the know-how in order to get that done. Um, so we decided to take that step. And it's been a journey ever since. Um, I still scratch my head sometimes. I <laughs> Um, especially with um, a few of my children and their behavior. But the long run is well worth it to see them succeed, to see them capture the idea or the lessons that you have put before them, to see them finally grasp it and understand it and ask questions. Um, it makes it well worth it. And it's so funny, I'm going to just slide this in. You can hear them at the door telling everybody to be quiet and shin everybody because they're listening to me right now and talk about them. Um, but I would have it no other way. Beautiful, beautiful. Now tell us the ages of your, your sons. You're going to make me think. You're going to make me think. Okay, I have two. My, my two oldest are seven years old. They'll be eight this September. Um, I also have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. Okay, so everyone, five you all, five girlfriends and guy friends under the age of eight right now, five of them. Two of them, one, you know, set of twins in there. But um, so you all are getting it done. Tell me, first of all, I want to say that I appreciate your passion and your com and just as passionate in your voice. Like, I got to get this done. I don't know how we're going to do it. I got to work a full-time job. My wife got to do what she got to do, and she's working right now. But we are going to invest in our boys. So kudos to you for the passion and the commitment to get it done and, and hang in there because it's no easy thing you know, feet when, you know, you both have that situation going on. But you know what? It's possible when you dedicate it. And it sounds like your dedication is definitely cemented in. So kudos Absolutely. to you, Jonathan. Kudos. You. So how was your first year of homeschooling? What did that, what did it look like? How did it go? <laughs> uh, my first year of homeschooling was very interesting um, because not only 
was I in a position to teach, but I allow my children to be in a position to teach me as well. Um, the scenario that I'm used to is that everybody is in form, in line, because I was, I went to a public school and you had one person teaching and it seemed so easy um, versus you standing in a place where you at the front of the class and you see the misbehaviors, the interruption, the lack of attention, um, or, or not being able to give their energy to something for so long, it, it became very challenging and it became a, uh, something, honestly, I no longer wanted to do due to the fact that it wasn't easy for me as I uh, was hoping that it would be. Um, it was something I was willing and me and Catherine had talks about even just letting them go to public school and then we, when they get home, start the training, which if anyone chooses that route, I don't believe anything is wrong with that. But for us, we understand um, that there's more that we had to give. So we wasn't willing to give up, even though we wanted to give up. Um, we misplaced paperwork. We uh, fell behind deadlines. Um, we wanted to have our children at the top of a skyscraper. Um, at the end of a course, at the end of a week, I'm expecting them to go from basic math to calculus. Uh, I had two. My my ambition was strong, and my zeal was 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 uh, complimenting. But the reality of it is that it, it wasn't uh, the pace. Um, the reality of the pace that I was taking wasn't uh, something to accomplish that. And my baby boy just walked inside of the room. So if y'all hear a baby making noise, just you know, you can just push that to the side. Now, um, despite uh, wanting to give up, um, every day waking up and seeing it and understanding what can be accomplished. Let me close this door real quick. And understanding... Um, who was able to send their children to college at a young age, was able to accomplish a lot. I'm still learning how to juggle everything that's happening in life. Um, but we're still here. We're still pressing on. My children are still learning. Um, out to dominate in anything that they go in. So we're excited. That's a good deal, good deal. One of the things that you said that I want to backtrack on when you in your bio is that you said it was important for you to make sure that you, you and your wife educate your black sons. You said, I need to make sure I educate them. So um, are, are you able to hear me well? It's kind of a yeah. lag on my side. Okay. So tell me exactly, I mean, what does that mean to you? What does that look like? Why? What? What's the importance of that for you? Well, my study put me in a position where I, inside of America, our society, when it comes to black child, it's an 80% chance that your child is going to be labeled. Um, if a child cannot sit still inside of a classroom, um, they will have uh, hold of the child, which the damage is far more. Um, me is his to talk about certain things inside of the curriculum that is given to teachers discerning black um it limits the child ability to dream and see what they're able to do. I, me and um, a few fellas, we went out to do, um, I guess you could say a test. And we went to random individuals who was in high school and asked them, have you ever heard of Mansa Musa? They all say no, even though this was the richest man that ever lived, who was a moor, who was black, um, by selling gold and salt to the entire planet. Have you ever heard of the moors? 
um, they would say no. The Moors was instrumental in giving science, astronomy, math, um, different languages um, to continents all across this planet. Even down in Mexico, they have statues' head built up about 10 feet tall, representing them all in North America, all in Africa, all in India, even in Europe. Um, so to be limited, to have my children sit and learn um, a one-sided view of history, where everyone that um, was, was mainly oppressing the people that look like them are waved as a hero um, versus the true story being stated and allowing the children to decide who's the villain and who's the good guy. Um, they're told and the, the agenda was pushed that these people that have dominated you um, rather and, and, and wrong using wrong means to dominate are heroes in this one month that we give you, this 29 days that we give you, is uh, you learn about slavery and a few people that was assassinated. The size rolls apart. <laughs> it's like, that's not something that my children can actually grasp and identify with. It's actually um, psychologically it is that there is someone that's superior and it's not you. So you never have the mind frame to elevate beyond um, that was passed on out of American history. And in order for my children to be dominant, uh, they need to be able to grasp and hold on to the story of, of people that have revolutionized in their time and even after their time. Like Thomas Sackler, who um, was in Africa, who was the, one of the first ones to push the European help out so they can cultivate their own land. Um, someone like that who stood up and he said, hey, this is best for my people versus this is best for the uh, adventures that I'll receive my faith. Um, again, people like uh, uh, Mansa Munster. Um, so the list goes on and on, and I'll rather them do that thing. I'll rather them learn how to talk to stars, um, how to listen to the frequency of everything that the creator has made. And understand how you are one with the earth versus the earth is something that you can just grab and destroy at will. Um, learn how to protect those that are important. Learn agriculture. Learn how to grow food. There's so many individuals that is coming out, and the only thing they know about food is you go to the store and you buy it. There's a lot of people, and it's, it's funny. Uh, and if we have time, I'll demonstrate. I actually show you how you do certain things. Um, only cling to the idea of having money, not even understanding what gives money value. And that's something that is important for me to teach um, our children is the fact that American currency is not backed by oil nor gold, nor anything that has substance is backed by what's called black money, which is a promise that the government will pay. So if the government crashes, the dollar crashes, the dollar crashes, the government crash, and that's something you so when you begin to travel across the world, you can see what has value, that the earth itself has value, not what it's made up to have value. Um, so I wanted to pull them out of the matrix that plague generation after generation, um, that they can begin to develop and cultivate their own culture and their own world and it becomes a, a, a more than a fad or a sway. Um, they receive a way of life to be highly educated and to be a business owner um, and to experiment, to be a scientist, to, to learn how to cultivate the land that's under you and feed yourself. Um, so all those things play a factor into um, me standing where I am, uh, my children. Gotcha. That's a mouthful, but that is good. That is really good. A mouthful. Woo, girlfriends. Okay, that's this is Jonathan Jagger. He just put it down very clearly. I just asked him why he wanted to homeschool his black sons, and he just laid it out there. So thank you for sharing that, Jonathan, and that is very insightful, and um, I concur with everything that you said. That's excellent. So you told us about how your first year started and your expectation with your boys, and it just didn't meet where you are. But um, you stood in there and you kept going. So what daily habits did you, what kind of daily habits did you put in place 
as a full-time homeschool, a full-time uh, working dad, you know, doing this thing with his full-time working wife. What's your daily habit look like? My, um, from the beginning, I was, and um, this is based on my character. I was always someone that planned things out. So I had to go to the drawing board a whole lot because the first plan that I have, it crashed, it burned horribly. It was, it was sad. We had a funeral for it. It was, it was horrible. Um, the second plan crashed, and I kept on working and kept on trying to come up with a better way, um, a, a, a better format that's actually going to work, that's not going to just benefit me and my time restraint. And not only am I working full-time, I'm also in school full-time. Um, I'm also internship right now. Um, and I'm working on side projects, so it's, it's my day is stretched. My time is very limited, um, so I had to learn, you know, time management not just as a, as I used to think about it as a single man, but as a man that now has a vision for other individuals, for my sons, for my wife. Um, so it took going back to the drawing board consistently, even if the plan worked, to go back to the drawing board and see if you can make it better. Um, and what I found is that for my children, first, individual attention is so needed, not just in education, but just in spending time. So it may be a time where I'm going to the store and I would just take one of them and they will fight. They will fight. And I let them. I don't know if that's good, but I let them. <laughs> I know as long as there's no cheating and they don't grab toys to hit each other with, it's going to build a good bond. I let them fight a little bit and they show their alpha skills and get to the, the testosterone rolling. It's not a problem. Uh, but I may take one of them and we talk about nothing concerning math or astronomy or anything. Um, but we just spend that time. So the next time I approach them, they're more receptive to what I have to say. Um, because I'm not just there for business. I'm actually giving them this because I care for them. Um, so that has been something that really helped me out. And even in their behavior, when it comes down to having the classroom set sessions, their behavior even changes um, based on the amount of time that I spend with them. They begin to misbehave or become very irritated when I spend less time. Um, and the more time I spend, the more humble they are, the more willing they are, which is, again, a, a big commitment because my time is limited. So I had to schedule who was going to get time from me and how was it going to work. And if a chaos happened, what am I going to tell them? And another thing I had to learn was to do is not make any promises. Um, but to, unless I know it's absolutely solid, um, but knowing how life normally throws a, a uppercut at you, um, I normally don't make too many promises. I tell them I would do the best that I can, and they see that every single day that Daddy did the best that he could. Um, so it's 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 consistently being willing to redevelop. And it, it all goes back to the philosophy. In order to get to a place you've never been, you must become somebody you've never been. Um, so I have been grooming myself, even to the present day, um, taking time to question what is working and who is it working for? Mm -hmm. How is it working for them? Now, if I, if I do this for a week, where do my anticipation say that they will be? And what is the reality of where they are? and figuring out how can I tweak that? How can I make it better? Um, so for some of my children, I have to draw um, what we call banana head mans when they do math. Three banana head mans over here and five over here. How many banana head hands do you have? And we may get some paper and chop it out and make yellow hats so we can imitate the math, you know, for some of them. For some of my sons, I just ask questions and the challenge alone excites them, especially when they get it right and they get the praise. Um, that they worked hard to receive. Uh, so yeah, I hope that, <laughs> hope that answered yeah. the question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's good, that's good. You brought up another thing that I have to ask, and I'm, I'm, I, this is kind of a special episode because it's a black dad in the home that's teaching, and so it takes me on a lot of rabbit tw tw uh, trails. But tell us, Jonathan, I'm just curious to know, since you know, being in this position as the homeschool dad, how important have you seen it be that your boys see their dad or black figure teaching them 
I mean, because you said when you take them on, you know, take them out with you and they're, you know, get to spend that time with you, it's just like they're fighting to be with daddy. I mean, what do, yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that speaks a lot. So what do you feel like you, your presence being there day in and day out really does for these young, young men? Wow. So I'm going to start it off by saying the importance is is rated to me that even if I can't be there, I will call on a friend to be there, to step in, to be a male figure. It's that important to me that they see the black man um, being willing to. Um, it is it's highly important, honestly. And it's not based on anything different that the woman can't. Um, it's not based on uh, the fact that I'm better than or, or, or uh, or whatever the case is, it's the very chemistry that the king will teach his prince how to rule a kingdom. So a father should teach his son or his daughters how to handle certain affairs. Um, and it's not the fact that uh, anyone else can't teach them, but the importance of having a man that loves them and a man that looks like them, a man that they can say that inspires you, to actually be there in front of you to say, hey, I'm giving you my time, I'm giving you my energy. Um, and when you accomplish something, I'm going to be there no matter how big or how small. And as they take growing steps, they know that they have the support of a nation behind them. I think it's absolutely important because at that point, their confidence, if I don't have the opportunity to see them, if, if they're playing a, a, a game or they're running for Senate, um, or they're becoming the president or building a rocket to go to, to outer space to, to discover what's there, whatever it is, if they can just remember my face, that alone gives them the power that they need in order to press on. And it starts now, it starts at a, a young age with them seeing their face on here with you. Now, even though I'm here with you, understand I'm not always going to be here besides you. So let me let you go off a little bit on your own. And every time you look behind you, you're going to see me here. You're going to notice my presence will always be there with you. Um, and I think instilling that, I don't think I think, I, I am confident that instilling that not only creates a healthy relationship, it helps develop the mind where they will be willing to repeat what is what they have seen. Um, so it breaks cycles of generation. Now, my father wasn't around. He actually, <laughs> I laugh at him. Now, I talk to him now. I've, I've forgiven him, and we have good conversations when, when we do speak. Um, I laugh at him all the time. I was like, how come you didn't come when I was born? And he will make up some excuse because he don't want to stay. And he didn't come because he thought I was going to be a girl. And what's funny is that I thought that was pretty lame. Like, you couldn't make up another excuse. You yeah. know, I saw a road. You know, an uh, elephant was flying something, you know, but he wasn't there. And the cycle of uh, uh, abandonment could have repeated itself if I did not wise up and grow up as a man. Um, because a lot of people who abandoned, abandoned because they were abandoned. A lot of people hurt people, hurt people. Um, so not only is my presence motivating, encouraging, stimulating, it also breaks a reputation and a curse that has uh, lingered over the black community for so long. Mm -hmm. um, even the uh, very, uh, um, can be challenged inside of uh, America when it comes down to the black family being involved in their children's life. There was tons of studies done about that that pushes that idea out the window. But it's yeah. something that was able to be held because there were so many you could have pointed at and say, your father's not there. So they were not participating inside of a fight that they have no need to be in um, versus, hey, my father's here. I see how it feels to be healthy in this area. Now I can dominate and cultivate it. Mm. That's good. Wow. Woo! Girlfriends! <laughs> This man keeps dropping nuggets. He just leave me messing around. It's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Girlfriends, we are here this evening. Girlfriends has got to homeschooling with Jonathan Jaeger out of South Carolina. Homeschooling dad alongside his homeschooling wife of five boys. Little princess. Princess, yes. 
Principe is how we say it in Spanish. But um, and he is just mesmer mesmerizing me and dropping all of these nuggets and bombs. You all gonna have to replay and get back and hear this again and again and again. Um, and just and and chew on a bit of what he's saying. So this is really really good stuff. So Jonathan, as we transition into uh, the next part of our show, um, tell us, take us to your worst day of homeschooling. It was so bad you were ready to take them back to public school, like in a handbag. Let's go, like running out the door or somewhere somebody's home school, but you're done. You're about to quit, but you didn't quit. And that's why you're still this homeschooling dad now, what, two years straight strong. And um, cause you didn't quit. Take us to that day and tell us about it. Okay. I have to start by saying I have many days. <laughs> it's not one specific day that I can point at and say, hey, this was my worst. I have a lot of those days where there's so much I wanted to want to accomplish. And honestly, it's just their integrity don't meet my expectation. And for some people, it can be other things. They like one time we were uh, uh, doing homeschool. I have a dry erase board inside of their room. So when it's time for them to go to bed, they can sit in their bed and we do school. One of my sons took a diaper and threw it at the dry erase board in the middle of me teaching. He took it off. I didn't see him. I smelled something, though. I did smell something. I should have had my daddy's senses on. It didn't kick in yet. Boom. Diaper hits the wall. <laughs> so now I have to stop. I have to clean up. And I'm like, you ungrateful little kids. I'm sitting here trying to teach you something, and you're going to throw a diaper at me. That's just <laughs> Um, oh, interesting moments, but my my position, uh, where I stand, and how I am grounded right now is that I I don't really have bad days. All my days are all character building and lessons for me. Their their conduct isn't sometimes it's to challenge me because they're young men and they're supposed to challenge the alpha and. Me being the alpha, I have to challenge them. Um, but that, their conduct is, hey, Father, it's time for me to teach you, whether they know it or not. So it's time for me to observe, okay, Jonathan, checklist, did you spend time with them? Mm. Is the way that you present in this information attractive? Okay, what can you do? Do, do? do they just need a break for a moment, just to be a kid, um, to play around and, and actually have a polo fight with you versus trying to solve um, some division problem that's four steps deep. <laughs> um, so I take those moments, and they do not occur as often as they used to. Um, but I take those moments to really evaluate and to see where I stand that maybe it's not them that is, that is actually being the interruption. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm not the person that's actually in line to what needs to happen or how it needs to go. Um, so I take those things into consideration that all this is just a moment of character building. It teaches me patience. It teaches me understanding. It teaches me how to stop when life is so busy and just to admire the creativity of my children, especially when we got them labeled. Now, Buying my children label is one of the best investments that we made for their creativity. Um, and because we have an opportunity to see them use their imagination and skills, which is, a, uh, I believe, an asset for any growing child. Um, but I can't tell you how many times I was interrupted in the middle of talking because they want to show me the elk plane we just built. And I'm like, why are you building elk planes in the middle of class? Like, why? Like, why? But what it did is it taught me to say, okay, Next time, let's use some Legos to do math or to do reading. Let's take what they actually enjoy and see how this works. So I always try to um, flip it back around to be the victor. Maybe because I'm prideful. I, I get that sometimes. <laughs> but I always try to take those moments as a blessing. Gotcha. So conversely, tell us about your, your proudest moment in homeschooling, where you – just thought about whatever happened and you thought, wow, this, this right here is why I do, this is why we do what we do, this moment right here. Take us to that moment, Jonathan. The moment, wow, and there's a few moments. So um, inside of a nutshell, I will explain, in a sense, all the moments or some of the moments. Um, one of my moments, I was cooking dinner and 
anyone that knows me know I love to cook. And the children always hover around to, to watch what we're making. And they ask questions. Um, and they begin to argue at the dinner table. And the argument at first started kind of quiet. I paid no attention to it. It started to get louder and they started to get mad at each other. And no, you know that's And I'm like, son, son, like, what are y'all arguing about? Who's going to be like you first? <laughs> uh -huh. I was like, none of y'all can be like me. It's me. <laughs> and me trying to laugh it off, but it almost brought me to tears hearing them say that. Um, and of course, my follow question is why? Because if you're going to say you're going to do something, what's your why reason for doing that? Because if it's empty, if it's hollow, then don't say it. Um, but if it has substance, then take it and run with it, grow with it. And one of my sons said, because you remind me of Master Moon. And they begin to pick different people that we talk about and say, because you look like this, or you do like this, or you remind me of this. And it became a challenge of them sharing what we learned. Um, and that was a crown for me, or one of the, the rooms that got of my crown. Um, that out of all we learned, their hope is to say, I'm going to be like my father without compromising any heroes that they have inside of their lives. Um, that I have uh, uh, lay before them to say this person is great and this person inspires me that they would take those same individuals and without compromise say I want to be like daddy because daddy looks like this person so it encouraged me wow. bless me and at the same time it uh it showed that we're on the right track now um granted I I, I, I was a little shocked so you know I had to turn my head out like the onions got to my eye I had to wipe it away <laughs> got to me a little bit. Some onions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so moments like that happen. Moments mm -hmm. happen where they share what they have learned. And not only share, because to me, I don't want them just to imitate. I want them to actually be able to call it their own, to have an understanding of something. So them being able to share, apply, and expound on um, is something that I see is growing, which is always a shocking, take breath kind of moment. And I'm the father that if you say something, I'm going to question you. If you have an answer for it, if this is your foundation, I'm going to hold you to your foundation. Um, so if they say something now, they know that, okay, you better, you better know what you're talking about around that because we're going we're gonna to ask you about it. And if you don't know, we're going to say, don't say it. Period. Learn what it is and then talk to me about it. So, yeah, uh, those are the crowns that I'm I'm getting blessed with. Wow, that's beautiful. That that's absolutely beautiful. So we're going to go to the part of our show, Jonathan, where these are short questions. I mean, questions just to pick your brain, where you can give us quick answers, one or two sentences, uh, okay. so we can just just pick your brain a little bit. Uh, so, what is your favorite quote that helps you through your homeschooling journey? Now that's a good question. <laughs> my favorite quote or mantra don't give up don't give up <laughs> uh, do you all plan to homeschool all the way through to the end of high school have you thought that far um yes and no and I'll answer it shortly yes we have planned that far um, but we have not stopped at high school we stopped at careers Good answer. Good answer. What does that look like? Oh, I want to dig in real quick. So what does that look like all the way to careers? What does that mean? Well, careers, um, one of our children are very talented in entertainment. So we want them to be able to grow inside of the music industry, acting industry, film industry, everything that influenced um, the sightseeing state of individuals um, so they can control that market. Another one of our sons, he's very disciplined. So him being in charge of... Um, or being high-ranked military, um, where he has access to uh, um, things that the average individual won't have access to. Um, another one of my sons, he's very talented in speaking, and his posture shows him to be uh, someone that's a firm business tycoon, um, so someone that's going to dominate in business. Um, my other son, I don't know. I scratched my head on it. So, <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, but everything... Basically, our format is to find the pillars that control the world and place one of them inside of each pillar so that you can save as many people as you can. 
Love it. Okay, love it. I'm glad you expounded on that. All right. What is something that's unique to the Jagger Homeschool? Something that's unique to what you all do that you take pride in? This is what we do and makes us us in our homeschooling. Ah, that's another good question. Um, the unique thing about the Jagger Homeschool is that it's catered to each individual. And each person in homeschool have their day to be them. They have their day to teach, to read everybody a book. And also, they all have to share a law out of the Black's Law Dictionary. That's, that's unique. That is unique. What yeah. curriculum or CD or something that's in your library, in the Jagers library, that you feel every homeschool should have this, this resource? Man, um, Derek... Uh, I actually don't know his last name. He's on Facebook. And a lot of people recognize him due to the tattoos he have on his face and dreads he have on his hair. He is awesome at homeschooling, um, another black family. Um, and also, Kam Kamala. <laughs> I chopped it. I knew I chopped it. Um, but it's Kamala Academy, which is a, um African-based, if you would, uh, homeschooling curriculum. Um, to be 100%. We don't really base our whole curriculum off those. We take nuggets here and there, um, but our curriculum is formed from what our children need. Okay. What is the best piece of advice you have received during this homeschooling journey? Um, to always be a student. What was that? To always be a student. Oh, to always be a student. Okay. What is your favorite resource or tool, app, online resource that uh, you feel like every homeschooler should know about that you can recommend? Um, Black's Laws Dictionary. Okay. Uh, now, here we go. We are on the million dollar question, the last question. Are you ready, Mr. Jaeger? Let's do it. All right. If you had to start all over again, back to day number one of homeschooling, but you have your current wisdom, knowledge, skills, convictions, insights, what would be the first thing that you would change or be sure to implement this first now go around once again? The first thing that I will change is my approach um, versus being a dictator of what they will learn. To actually ask questions, what they want to learn? What expound on that? What like what does that mean? What does it that was, look like? That it was short question. Not the not the million dollar question. The million dollar question you can you can speak on a little bit. That's the million dollar question. Well, approaching homeschool, I believe a lot of people experience this where they say, okay, here's what I'm going to teach them, and this is what they're going to learn. Versus saying, what would you like to learn? And Let's take what you learn and now implement it inside of different activities that you're doing. That way you keep your interest and you get a lot further without the pressure of having to perform. Um, so the first thing I would change is kind of going back to what I said earlier, being a student and saying, okay, what would you like to learn about? So. Okay, I got you. That's called, that's uh, it's a terminology for that. It's called self, um, self-taught self learner or self-led learning or unschooling. That's exactly what that is. Going with what the kid, the child wants to learn and what they what they are have interest in, and then uh, compounding upon that is that basically it? Yes, yes, exactly. You, you you got a terminology there. You didn't even know it. It's called unschooling. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful, Jonathan. So, Jonathan, any last three things from you? Any last words of advice you'd like to give to the guy friends and girlfriends here? Number two, let us know whatever you have that you put your hands into right now that you want to you make the village uh, aware of. And number three, how can they best get in contact with you guys, get in contact with Jonathan, and the gals can get in contact with his wife. He's going to tell us his wife information too. So if they want to continue the conversation, they can get in contact with you and uh, pick your brain a little bit more. Okay. Um, question number one, I actually forgot it already. <laughs> any last words of advice last words of advice um to anyone that's doing homeschool even thinking about it is similar to anything else that you do um of course you want to do your research you want to be able to set your plan up make sure your schedule is there but there's no roadmap to life there's no roadmap to raising children 
there's no uh, guide into doing anything involving growth. Children grow, humans grow. It's a fact. That's how we create it. Um, so with something that grows, be willing to just jump in and give it a shot. Um, it's going to be tiring. It's going to be um, a headache involved. Um, but the overall picture is a bond, a relationship, and education that they can't get from any place else. Beautiful, beautiful. What do you have your hands involved in that you want to let us know about, and how can they get in contact with you and Catherine? All right. Um, first thing is I am, of course, uh, being a software developer. I do develop uh, websites on the side as a, um, a, a, as a freelancer at the moment. So anybody looking for some hot websites, and also uh, uh, the individual I work with, Urban Geeks, um, look them up. It's a black-owned business, Urban Geeks, who also uh, um, deals with that. Great, great, great people. Um, on top of that, uh, I do music. Um, it's political, so it's just, just get your heads up on that. <laughs> um, and if you want to learn how to cook for the fellas, you want to learn how to cook? I'll let you. <laughs> and put some pool and also shoot some guns. A lot of people ain't with guns. I personally enjoy guns. I took my sons out to go shoot an AK-47 the other day. We had an awesome time. We talked about gun safety the whole nine yards. Um, so I'm looking for some fellas I can shoot some guns with. Good gravy. Okay. How you want us to get in contact with you to continue the conversation? To get in contact with me, you can either shoot me an email at just code Jager, just J U S T code C O D E Jager J A G E R at gmail dot com, or you can send me a text or give me a call at eight four three five nine seven four eight zero seven. For my wife, you can call her at eight four three nine two six five three four three. I sound like a sponsor. I know. That's good, though. <laughs> you had that voice. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jonathan. Listen, all you girlfriends and guy friends, you are the average sum of the five people you hang out with. And you've been hanging out with Jonathan Jager for the last hour. Woo! And he has been making a positive impact on you all. So listen, continue to get connected with other homeschooling families who will make a positive impact on your life. And um, you become that positive impact that others can draw from. You know, it's about reciprocation, giving and receiving, giving and receiving. We're building a village here, you all. And you all just got your village extended into South Carolina with the Jaeger family, homeschool dad and mom of five boys. So you all keep up the momentum and continue to connect with some positive homeschooling families. Uh, be sure to go over to the Facebook page, Girlfriends has Got Homeschooling, where you can get connected and receive notification every time we go live with one of these amazing families uh, in the African diaspora who are homeschooling, who are in the marginalized homeschooling uh, arena. I mean, you want to hear these interviews that you will walk away encouraged, enlightened, you know, saying, hey, dude, um, yeah, I can do it. If Jonathan can do it, if Angela can do it, I can do it. You know, so you're going to walk away with some tools and some resources and encouragement. So stay connected by following us on Facebook and on YouTube at Girlfriends Has Got to Homeschooling. Uh, get on our podcast, anchor.fm, where we are GG2H-Angela J. Perry. Every day I'm on the phone with a girlfriend. Yes, we're doing girlfriend chats. That's what it's called, girlfriend chats. You can hear these uh, amazing interviews on the podcast and just daily insights that I share as well. So, Jonathan, Girlfriends has got homeschooling. Is grateful to you. Appreciate you so much for giving up your time, your wisdom, your bombs, your nuggets that you have been dropping this evening. We are so grateful to you and appreciate you. Um, just for making a positive impact on thousands of homeschoolers worldwide um, through this resource. So thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you for having me. You, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad to have this time with you. So girlfriends, I hope this has been in interesting, enlightening, um, encouraging, informative. Uh, now you go out and go ahead and, and share your story. If you'd like to be on Girlfriends' as Guide to Homeschooling, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Just remember to touch a child is to touch, to teach a child is to touch a life.
And as we homeschool, we not only touch a life, we shape the future through our efforts of homeschooling. So keep making a positive impact, mamas and daddies, day after day, year after year, as you are homeschooling your children. So kudos to you. Get in there and get it done. Get in the dang thing done. Ready to go. Ready to go. All right, all of you. You all have a great night. Until our next interview, we'll see you then. I'm Angela Jordan Perry, and I'm your host of Girlfriends' Guide to Homeschooling. You all be blessed. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks. <laughs>